So guys, we did it. I got all the 1.0 costumes in Super Mario Maker 2. 94 costumes and still growing. But yes, I am the 17th person in the entire world to have gotten all of the Mii costumes currently available in Super Mario Maker 2. I say currently available as ninjis aren't included as they technically aren't released yet, so we only count the pre-update costumes. We will eventually count the ninji costumes once Nintendo finally releases 20 levels. To collect all the costumes, it takes a ton of effort, so today I'm going to be giving some of my and a few other people's strategies on getting all the costumes in this game for yourself. I'll be going over every single costume and group them based on what is needed to get them. For example, the mushroom hair clip and the firework shirt are both based around wind streaks, so instead of repeating myself, I'll just cover them both at the same time. I'll make a pinned comment with timestamps just in case there are any particular costumes you want. Before we get started, did you know only about 10% of my viewers are subscribed to the channel? So please consider dropping a like and subscribing if you enjoyed the video. But with that being said, let's jump into my tips and strategies on getting all the costumes in Super Mario Maker 2. First off, let's go through the ones you have by default, that being no hat, yes I'm counting this, the Nintendo shirt, the Super Mushroom shirt, the 1-Up hoodie, the black short shorts, the denim jeans, and the denim skirt. There's no strategy behind these since, well, they're unlocked from the start of the game, so the only real strategy here is being able to beg your parents for $60 to buy the game. The story mode costumes are also very straightforward. Basically, just play through it and you'll unlock them all. Below this quick montage, I'll show exactly what is needed to be done to collect these. However, there's no real need to talk strategy since they aren't too difficult. Those being the peach wig and dress, the builder hat and suit, the Super Ball Mario hat and suit, the robot cap and suit, the frog cap, the refreshing shirt, which is titled this way as it represents how all refreshing special levels should be erased from existence. Continuing on, the Partrick shirt, the Yamamura shirt, the Reset dress, and finally, Princess Peach's tennis outfit. Just like that, 21 of the 94 costumes are unlocked fairly easily. On top of those though, there are even more that I couldn't really come up with a strategy for since they're just so easy and don't really fit in with a category, which are the Goo Goo onesie for liking the course, the Bonsai Bill shirt for commenting on a level, and the Fishbone shirt for uploading a course. And speaking of the Fishbone, they're a fish version of our best boy Dry Bones, Dry Bones for Smash. With the ones with pretty much no strategies out of the way, let's jump into the others. We're just going to go in the order made out by the hats, then in the order of the shirts, etc. So let's get going. First off is the play X amount of levels category. To complete these, you'll just have to play, win or lose, in a certain number of courses. This consists of, in order of rank, the slobbery shirt for after 10 courses, the cat mario headgear and suit after 100 courses, the thwomp suit after 500 courses, the mario cap and outfit for 1000 courses, and the midnight dress for 3000 courses. Now if you're going for all the costumes, you won't have to try to get these specifically, since you'll get them on the way to clear 10,000 courses for the final one, and obviously if you've cleared them, you've played them. However, since I'm also making this a guide for people who may only want one of these costumes in particular, I might as well go over the fastest way to do all of these from my findings at least. Now for it to count as a play, you'll need to either die in the level or clear the level, otherwise it won't count. So unfortunately, you can't just go into endless easy mode and repeatedly skip a level. What I would suggest is either going into Super Expert Endless or just into the course world, die as soon as you can, exit the level, and then find a new one. Using this technique, I completed around 15 levels in 5 minutes, which could definitely be done faster because that was kind of slow, meaning it would take around 16 hours to get the midnight dress using this technique at the rate I was going, which, again, like I said, could definitely be done faster. Again, I would advise against doing this if you're going for all the costumes. The only niche time you might want to do this is if you want the midnight dress or the Mario suit, and only one of those, and you don't really care for any other costume. Very niche case, so I wouldn't really suggest doing this one if you're going for all the costumes, but if you just want one of these two, then this is your best bet. Next up we have the costumes you get for leveling up in Versus. Going in order of rank again, we have the Luigi cap and outfit for C rank, the Doctor headgear and coat for B rank, the laughing shirt for A rank, the Nintendo uniform for S rank, 
And finally, the biggest boy of them all, the superb suit for S plus rank. This is where the tips start to be more important. I've already made a video on this costume in particular, so I highly suggest watching that video for some more in-depth tips on winning and doing well in versus mode. Some of the big ones though are making sure at the very least you touch the flagpole. You'll lose significantly less points if you touch the flag than if you don't. That's why levels in Mario 3, Mario World, and castle levels that aren't in 3D World are bad since you don't get a flagpole to get partial credit on. I also suggest waiting at the flag if you basically already won, as then people will like you better for saving them some points and may wait for you in the future. Finally, I suggest joining the Versus Discord to talk with others about the grind. Also, while you're at it, join my Discord as well, why don't you? Also, I messaged my arch nemesis, D101, asking if he had any tips as at the moment he's number 6 on the Versus leaderboard. He said to always duck jump, to learn how to quickly do all the title screen levels and 1-1 since, from my experience at least, and probably his as well, you'll get a ton of those because for some reason people are obsessed with re-uploading them. Learn how to use the cape power up, and play later at night. That's because people are more tired and there will be less people, so you have a more likely chance of winning. Anyways, for more specifics on gameplay, make sure to check out the other video. Now onto the other versus costumes, we have the ones for win streaks. Those being the Shorts of Doom for winning one match, the Bowser headpiece and suit for two consecutive wins, the Firework shirt for five consecutive wins, and finally the big one, the Mushroom hair clip for ten consecutive wins. Now these are probably some of the most luck dependent costumes in Super Mario Maker 2, which make them absolutely awful to get. However, I have three techniques here on getting these as easily as possible. Technique number one, play very late at night or very early in the morning. This will make it so that the games will more likely be 1v1s, which make your odds go from only 25% chance to a 50% chance. The game will tell you how many people are in beforehand, so if you see this number go over 2, press the home menu button to cancel the game creation and try again. It may also be helpful to block players who are better than you, or just block a whole bunch of them so it's easier to get 1v1s. Don't worry though, you can always unblock them later. Blocking them will make it so that you can't get in the same game as them. Maybe once you've found an easy player, try to grind wins off of them. This technique will still be hard if you're going for 10 wins, as it's only about a 0.09% chance considering both you and your opponent are equally skilled. Still though, it's better than the 0.0001% chance you have otherwise. Technique number 2. Once you've become really good at the game, drop all the way down to D rank. The wins here, for an experienced player at least, are incredibly easy. Just keep playing and if you lose, just drop down again. You could combine this with the last technique for more optimal chances, although you more than likely won't need to do that. This last one requires a friend though, which means most of us won't be able to do it, but let's cover it anyway. Basically, do the same thing as the first technique, however block every single person online at that time and have your friend do the same. Then after blocking people for a really long time, click the play game button at the same time. If the number goes anywhere above 2, then press the home menu button as soon as you can and try again. Once in the game with just you and your friend, have him let you win or you let him win depending on who's getting the costume. Keep in mind, for this to work, you and your friend will have to have a similar rank and live in the same general area. This technique is very effective and not very difficult. I did this with On Top Games to get both our 10 win streaks, and we were both able to get our 10 win streak first try. It took an extremely long time though, I had about like 5 hours, but it's by far the most effective technique. If you do this one though, don't be mean and leave your friend behind once you get it, and help them out if you want it. Also keep in mind that you will lose versus points while doing this, but I definitely think that's a fair exchange considering you're basically getting a free 10 win streak, so it makes complete sense for both of you to lower down in the rankings. Man, that one sure was a long one. Anyways, moving on, we've got the endless achievements for easy and normal difficulty. Those being the Bowser Jr. headpiece for 10 easy endless clears, the Sting Bee skirt for 100 easy endless clears, the Angry Sun shirt for clearing 10 normal endless levels, and the Face Plant for 100 courses cleared in endless normal. The reason I'm grouping these costumes together, despite them technically being different goals, is because they both basically don't really require any strategy. It's really hard to fail either of these two, so really just playing endless mode won't be much of a challenge here, and you'll likely get it first try. 
Still though, make sure you're getting 1-ups, and even though these levels may be super easy, there might still be a stray one that confuses you, so don't be afraid to skip it with the minus button. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Next up are the costumes you get for having a certain number of world records. Those being the pipe hat for one world record, the pipe skirt for 10 world records, the Mario swim trunks for 100 world records, and the superstar beret for 500 world records. Before we get into the strategies, it's important to note that you have to have these world records all at once. Basically, if one of your world records is stolen, it will no longer count towards getting these costumes. Anyways, coming from coming from the person who was uh, number one of the leaderboard for like five seconds at one point, I know a thing or two about getting them fast. Here are two methods I came up with. The first one is just getting first clears. Basically, go to the level search and go to the new tab and play the first level there and beat it, or skip it if it's too hard. And then, since you're the only one who beat it, you'll have the world record. Make sure to play these levels pretty quick though, as you wouldn't want your records to get stolen. This method is best when going for all the costumes, as there are also some costumes for first clears we'll talk about in a little bit, so this is kind of like knocking out two birds with one stone. This is a slight bit slower than the other method though, but if you want both sets of costumes, I suggest starting with this. The second and much faster method is to go to any of the leaderboards, I chose Endless Easy, and choose any of the players on there. Then, go over to the record section, and if their time on a level is, say, under 20 seconds, try to beat it. If this record is too hard, try a different level. If the person is too good, try a different person. Once you find the right person, it's super easy to grind records off of them, and I was able to get around 40 records per hour when I was grinding to be number one. That would mean you would get the Star Beret after 12 and a half hours at this rate, assuming no one steals your records. But now that we've talked about where to set our records, let's talk about how. Each level is different, however, I'm going to give you some general movement tips to move faster overall. One of the biggest ones is slopes. Here's an image made by Relaxmas on Twitter showing what way of moving on a slope is fastest in each game style. It's best to memorize this or just get a general idea in your head for world records. Grabbing an item underwater speeds you up significantly, so usually it's best to go out of your way to pick one up as it'll help you speed up in the long run. Similar to that, stars will speed you up on the ground, so getting those will also give you a slight advantage. They're best when they're not inside question mark blocks, however they can still help if they are inside a question mark block, so it's usually it's best to go for. Note that your speed remains the same underwater, with or without a star, so it's not worth going out of your way to get. If you collect a checkpoint and die, restart, as respawning from a checkpoint actually adds the time from your failed attempts to the final attempt, which obviously would make your time very slow. Now the biggest one for world records is look for cheese. Cheese is basically a way of beating the level in an unintended way to make the level easier, and in most cases, faster. Take this for example. What you're supposed to do is kill Bowser here with the hammer, which takes forever. Instead, just break the arena with the hammer and get to the goal much faster. There are many types of cheese, like going over rooms or destroying walls, and many more, so make sure to look for them when setting records. I also asked D101 about this, and he said to learn 3D world movement, as many people don't know about it, and thus, they're easy world records. Usually what I do is jump and then long jump and then jump again, etc. I'm not sure if that's the fastest, but it's gotten me a ton of world records, so it should probably work for you as well. Also, if you're going for all the costumes, you likely won't have to grind, as you're more than likely going to get 500 world records on your 10,000 level grind. But if you only want the world record costumes, use this technique. This is kind of like the play level section, where you're more than likely going to get this along the way of getting 10,000 level clears. However, if you just want one of the world record ones, or if you weren't able to get 500 world records during your 10,000 level clears, then this is a good strategy to use. Next up are the multiplayer co-op costumes, which include the burner skirt for one co-op clear, the magic koopa hat and robes for 10 co-op clears, and the Yoshi hat and suit for 100 co-op clears. These ones aren't really difficult, as in multiplayer co-op, as long as one person touches the flag, you all win. If you want to do this the fastest way possible, I guess just vote for easy on a level, as in general, they're shorter than the other difficulties. However, I think that gets boring, so I voted for expert or super expert, as that's much more fun. If you want to get it over with though, then just select easy. You won't get it every time, but you most likely will. Next up are the ones you get for getting your level played by others, which include the Shy Cap for a level getting 100 plays, the Cheap Cheap Hat for 500 plays, the Bouncy Skirt for 1000 plays, the Running Shirt for 2000 plays, and the Wind Up Shoe for 5000 plays. 
First off, what counts as a play on your level? Well, looking back at the criteria earlier, it's either dying then exiting the level, or beating the level. Now, this is extremely luck dependent, as you need to hope that the algorithm makes your level played more. Or at least it would be very luck dependent if we didn't have this technique. Some of you checking my uploaded courses may have noticed that I have a level called Ignore This Level, which is actually what I use to get 5,000 plays, which I still have up for some reason. Really need to remove that. Anyways, this setup was what we thought to be the fastest way to clear a level at the time, so it was the best for getting plays. The setup was made by Kobob KC, who also was one of the other 17 people to have all the costumes. Although I was a bit of a dummy dumb and made this setup wrong, but uh, well, let's ignore that. Now, you can't clear the level yourself, as it won't count. However, you should be able to make another account on your Switch to do it, although I'm not sure if that works, so don't take my word for it. If that doesn't work, then you might need another Switch to do it. You could play the level as the same person over and over again, and it will still go up, even though it's the same person playing it. Now, I did say this used to be the fastest method, however, since then, Kobob has developed a new method right here, which clears the level automatically with the Turbo Controller. The level is on screen now, and if you want help getting this cleared, then check the link in the description as Kobob has a Reddit post saying that they would help anybody trying to get this costume with their Turbo Controller. There is a queue list right now, so don't be surprised if your level doesn't get played right away, because they have a lot of other people they have to help. It's nice of them to help out at all, so don't be pushy about getting help from them. If you do want to do this by yourself though, here's the fastest automatic version made by Kobob once again. Just either play this on another Switch, or on another account on the same Switch, which I think works, although again, like I said, I'm not sure. This design works with either in holding nothing, or holding forward. Holding forward is faster, so if you're there, it would be better. But the best method out of these two is definitely to ask on the Reddit post, but like I said, please be respectful to them and wait your turn. The Reddit post will be in the description below, so make sure to check that out. Okay, now onto the big ones for the medals in Super Mario Maker 2. These costumes include the question mark block hoodie for a bronze medal, which is top 1000 on the leaderboards, the Rocky Wrench manhole lid for a silver medal or top 200, the Koopa Troopa suit for a gold medal or top 100, the matrimony dress for a spiked bronze or third place, the fancy top hat and tuxedo for a spiked silver medal or second place, and finally the royal crown and attire for a spiked gold medal which translates to first place on one of the leaderboards. Now I did make a video on this a while ago but I'm not even going to link it because that thing is super outdated. I originally thought world records would be the best to go for, however, especially now, that is not the case. The by far best leaderboard to go after is the Maker Points Weekly leaderboard, as it's the only one that refreshes weekly, and the Maker Points in general just don't really work, so it's kind of easy to cheese. Like, let's see how my Maker Points change after I delete my level, ignore this level. Oh no wait, that actually makes sense. Uh, anyway, there's a great post made by Bra, who used to be the number one maker in the world in terms of maker points, at least, on how to use this method. It's linked in the description, however, I'll do my best to summarize it here. Basically, the maker leaderboard goes based off of how well your levels are doing this week as compared to the previous week. Basically, if you're already a popular creator, it's going to be harder to get on this leaderboard. However, if you're a newer player or somebody who doesn't get as many likes, it'll be much easier to get on here. Now, just because you're already an established creator doesn't mean you can't do this, as you can simply just delete all your levels, which tricks the game into thinking you're a new creator. Then upload a ton of levels at once and advertise them to streamers, Reddit, and Discord, or just anywhere in general to get your levels played and hearted. Now, you could just upload a set of levels that are literally just a straight line with nothing else, then get a bunch of people like your friends to heart them to get on top, but to me and a lot of other players think that's a pretty lame thing to do. I say if you're going to use this technique, then at the very least make actual levels, as that's much more respectable. Make sure those levels are easily accessible. I asked Bra what type of levels are the best for Maker Points, and he said just to make sure that the levels are accessible to everyone, and make sure that they feel good. Stuff like easy to normal 20 second speedruns are those awful refreshing special levels, as those get a ton of hearts. That's what we would suggest doing if you want to get to the number one Maker Weekly leaderboard. Just upload a ton of them all at once, and you'll be able to make it up there. However, like Bruss said, there's a tiny risk that you might only get the Royal Crown and just skip over 2nd and 3rd. However, I guess you could just do this again and just lowball it this time. Next up we got ourselves the Maker Point costumes. Those being the Stare Down Shirt for 2,000 Maker Points, the Door to Roy's for 5,000 Maker Points, and the Fried Chicken Headgear for 7,000 Maker Points. As we said earlier in the Royal Crown segment, Maker Points is based on the amount of total likes you have. 
If one of your levels gets booed, then you'll lose points. It's also important to note that deleting a level will set your maker points back to the amount you would have if that level was never uploaded in the first place. That means it would remove both positive and negative influences. Basically, you want to make easy levels that look nice and advertise them out so people like your levels. People usually don't boo easy levels, and music levels especially get a lot of hearts, so I suggest making them and sending them out. 20 second speedruns are also pretty good as well, just don't make them too challenging because a lot of people like to boo a level if they die in it. Now while these following costumes aren't the exact same as these above, you'll basically get them for doing the exact same thing as these, so I decided to add them in here. So these miscellaneous maker costumes are the I like you camisole for receiving a like on a level, and the block stripe shirt for receiving a comment on a level. There are also two more that aren't really very clear as to what you're supposed to do, and everyone I asked doesn't really seem to know the exact amount of feedback you need for these, but the two costumes are the antsy corduroys and the fried chicken hoodie. These both say that you need to have a course earn a lot of feedback in order to get them, however, like I said, that's very vague. We assume it means a lot of likes, comments, and boos, so it shouldn't be too hard to get if you're getting 7,000 maker points, so I wouldn't worry about them. Next on our list is another big section, and the one I ended with being total clears. This includes the white tank top for clearing one course, the skull skirt for clearing 10 courses, the big spender shorts for 100 courses, the propeller Mario helmet and clothes for 500 courses, the toad cap and outfit for 1000 courses, the Rosalina wig and dress for 3000 courses, the superstar flares for 5000 courses, and the thickest of them all, the Edame Beret for 10,000 courses. This costume is the one that takes by far the most time. Before we get into the main strategy, no, you can't clear the same level over and over again. They have to be different levels. So with 10,000 courses needed to be cleared, we're obviously going to want to minimize the amount of time we spend on this, so my first tip for those who are going for all the costumes, do this one last. Many of the other costumes require you to clear levels anyway, so doing this set last makes it so that you don't have to clear as many levels overall. The fastest method I found in clearing this was just to play Endless Easy. The levels here are super short, and I was able to get somewhere between 60 to 70 levels done in an hour. Some tips for doing this though is to make sure not to play any long levels. No, you're not going to want to pause on every level, as every single second counts when clearing 10,000 levels, so I usually pause on levels with big clear conditions or boss clear conditions levels that were underwater, or levels with lots of waiting on platforms and snake blocks. Now, grinding for these costumes takes a really long time, however, I actually wasn't too bored the whole time, as each level is different, however, I wouldn't suggest burning yourself out on doing too many levels a day. I usually did around 100 a day, with the most being 300. And this is still a huge task, taking something like 170 hours to complete, so just make sure to do this one last to minimize the time required. Other than that, just play easy every day and you'll eventually get it. This isn't a challenging one, just a grindy one. Next up is a pretty simple category, First Clears. This is basically when you are the first person to ever clear a course, and this includes the parent and child skirt for one first clear, the hot hot shirt for 10 first clears, and the chomp dog shirt for 100 first clears. This one is super simple. Just go to the new level section of Course World, clear a level, then refresh. It's really as simple as that, and if you really want to, you can also look for shorter levels by seeing how long it took the creator to clear. Keep in mind though, shorter levels doesn't always mean easier. It's best to refresh this tab after every level so that it's less likely that someone else has cleared a course before you. Just doing this over and over again should get you 100 first clears in only a few hours. Going from an easy one to another hard one, we have the Endless Costumes for Expert and Super Expert, which includes the Platform Skirt for 10 Endless Expert Clears, the Cloud Walker for 100 Endless Expert Clears, the Hover Clown for 10 Super Expert Endless Clears, and finally the Edamame Camisole for 100 Endless Super Expert Clears. Now, in all honesty, Expert Endless could go with Easy and Normal, however, some people may find it difficult, so I decided to add it on here, even though you really should be able to do it without any special techniques. I already made a video on the Edamame and Camisole, and how to get that, so I suggest checking that video out for a more in-depth look on this strategy. As a super, super quick recap, you'll need two switches and two copies of Mario Maker 2. Upon entering a level, screenshot the ID and play that level on the other switch. If it's too hard, skip it. And if not, practice it until you think you'll be good enough to do it on the main switch without dying. Rinse and repeat until you get 100 clears. 
This method takes quite a long time, around 20 hours for me, but it is pretty easy. Just don't use it to go over 100, as many people might find that kind of cheaty to use this method to get high on the leaderboards. There are more methods in my other video for those of you without two switches, so I'd check that out. Before I end this segment, I just wanted to say this technique was originally told to me by CTV, so his Twitter will be in the description. Thank you so much to him. But anyways, that's it for this super long video. The journey of getting all these costumes was incredible, and I'm happy I was able to do it, but I really hope I'm able to help out some of you as well. Do make sure to post your own strategies in the comments, and let me know if I helped any of you. Links to the Twitters to the people I talked about in this video being D101, Bruh, Kobob, CTV, On Top Games, and Relaxmas are in the description, along with my own Twitter. Make sure to join my Discord in the description as well if you're interested, along with the Versus Discord if you need help there. A lot of people also ask for my Maker ID, even though it's in the description, so make sure you check that out as well. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, and maybe even subscribe for more on Mario Maker 2 and anything Nintendo Switch. I really love Mario Maker 2, and even though I've got everything I need, aside from the ninjis, I'm definitely going to keep playing. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.